Hey everyone, welcome to No Debt Mindset. I'm Zach and that is Nora and Ollie. And we're here to guide you through how to stay debt free, how to plan for retirement, and look at your financial journey from a holistic perspective. So today's specific topic is is going to be around retirement planning for gig workers. So I know this is something that's crucial in today's economy. We are in a gig economy as of today. A lot of people after COVID happened, left their jobs and joined the gig economy and decided, I think this is working out better. I'm not going to go back to my full-time W-2 and I don't blame anyone who does that. So I know since this is on the rise, I felt like I'd make a video that went over kind of the different options that you have for retirement if you're choosing to go the independent contractor or the freelancer route. So without further ado, let's just kind of jump into this. So first things first, when you're assessing retirement as a gig worker, you need to estimate your living expenses, right? So you need to figure out how much money you spend right now on things like insurance, healthcare, housing, all the main things that you're going to still need after retirement figure out how much those essentials cost you. Now, this is gonna look different for everybody, right? So if you have kids, this might look different. If you're doing saving for their college, this might extend the time you need to retire, but figure out what those core expenses are because that's gonna drive the rest of your retirement. It's gonna give you a solid foundation for planning for your retirement savings and figure out how much you're gonna need in retirement. I'd say the easiest way to figure out how much you're spending is to create a budget. If you use something like the Ramsey Every Dollar app, that's a great place to start. This is going to get you a full scope, full picture of your financial situation. So you're going to be able to see how much money's coming in, how much money's going out, categorize your spending, and figure out how much money you actually need to live each month. So I would say if you don't have a budget, start out doing that. Figure out your living expenses, how much you need per year or per month to get by. And then we can figure out how much you need to save to be able to comfortably retire. So with your retirement needs in mind, it's going to be time to build an actual savings plan. So set specific savings goals so you can reach a projected retirement expenses uh, backlog or set of money that you have. Establish a monthly or annual savings target that you can withdraw from. And it's essential to reassess and readjust this as you go. But if you don't start with something, you can't really measure it, right? So you need to start, figure out a target amount of money that you wanna have in your retirement account before you retire that will allow you to pull out a certain amount of expenses each month in order to live for you know 30 to 35 years in retirement. That's gonna be another thing that you're gonna to wanna to figure out, right? Do you want to plan for 30 years of retirement, 35, 40? Does your family live long? Do your family have a history of living past like 90 or 95 years old? If you do, you might wanna plan for a longer retirement, right? Or a, or a smaller annual expenses. It's different for everybody, but just make sure you have those targets in mind. Uh, one thing I do wanna mention is having a safe withdrawal rate and not really having to worry about how much you're taking out of the principal balance of your retirement. This is a commonly followed topic in the financial independence and retire early crowd. You have a safe withdrawal rate target that is based off of a initial investment target, right? So let's say I have a million dollars invested in my 401k and I'm gonna have a safe withdrawal rate of 4%. That means that you can safely withdraw $40,000 of that million dollar investment every year and you're confident that it'll gain that back, right? So if I've invested correctly, and hopefully I have, hopefully by the end of my career, I can safely assume that my investments are going to earn on average four or more percent a year. But if my annual expenses are around $40,000 and that's all I need to withdraw each year off that principal balance, to keep myself living, then that's probably what I'm going to do so I can keep that principal balance going and then, you know, maybe use that that principal balance for something like bigger purchases down the line or for inheritance after I pass away. 
So a lot of you guys have options of, of figuring out getting higher amounts of money. If, if you're just a grinder and you're making a lot of money and you want to set aside a, a, a ton of money and then have a safe withdrawal rate and do that, that's also an option. But at the end of the day, you want to make sure that that principal balance or how much you're withdrawing from that is not going to be diminished in less than the time it takes for your retirement to, to be over before you pass away. So the next little piece of this is after you have you know established a savings plan, you know what your expenses are, you have a budget, what you need to do is actually figure out where to put this money, right, that you're saving. So there's tons of different options. The most liquid option is gonna be some kind of savings account, right? Now, right now, high yield savings accounts are huge because the interest rates are so high that banks are offering amazing uh, APYs on high yield savings accounts. So some accounts you can get above 4% on just money that you're saving and it's super liquid money. So I would say if you have no idea what you're doing in terms of investing, just go ahead and start throwing your money in a high yield savings account. I have one with Wealthfront. It's, it's a really good option. Their base APY is 4.3% right now. But if you don't know what you're doing as far as investment goes, retirement accounts, and you're working to get your retirement plan set up and you have some extra money, if it's sitting in a normal savings account right now, my suggestion is to put it in a high yield savings account. But let's get into actual investment vehicles and accounts that you can put your retirement savings in if you don't have a traditional employer. So there's gonna be about four different types of accounts I'll recommend to you guys. The first two are gonna be ones that really anybody can have. You don't have to be self-employed to have these, but these are useful for anyone really. And even if you're not a gig worker, you should probably have one of these. The first two are traditional and Roth IRAs. So traditional IRAs are available to anyone with earned income as well as Roth IRAs. Contributions may be tax deductible. A lot of times they're made with after-tax dollars and the investments grow tax-free. Now, the problem with IRAs is that there is a contribution limit on those. So for the year 2023, a Roth IRA has a $6,500 contribution limit if you're under the age of 50. and the difference in a Roth IRA and a traditional IRA is that required minimum distributions start at age 72 on a traditional, while there are no required minimum distributions on a Roth IRA. So you can essentially put money in a Roth IRA, let it grow tax-free, and then take the money out whenever you want. Um, but both of these are going to let you grow your money tax-deferred, right? With a Roth IRA, it's completely tax-free. With a traditional IRA, it's, it's tax-deferred. So the next option is going to be something that's specifically targeted at freelancers, contractors, and self-employed individuals, and that's a solo 401k. So this is specifically designed for self-employed individuals. So higher contribution limits uh, than IRAs is a feature that this has. They, they can be tax deductible and investments grow tax deferred as well. So you will have to pay tax on your growth in this account at some point but a lot of times what you can do is is defer the taxes because in retirement your tax rate is probably going to be lower than it is right now so if you let those grow tax deferred and pay taxes on them later it's usually the better option and then similar to the traditional ira the solo 401k required minimum distributions do start at age 72 as well. Withdrawals are taxed as ordinary income during retirement uh, as well. So that, that plays into the whole better rate at the end that I was mentioning. So the final type of account that I'll mention is an SEP IRA. So this is an IRA that's designed for self-employed individual. You have flexible contribution limits and that's up to 25% of your employers or your compensation or specific dollar limit, whichever is less. So the contributions can be tax deductible and the investments again do grow tax deferred. It's like the solo 401k, it's taxed as ordinary income during retirement and you do have to start distributing at age 72. So all of these you're gonna have to start distributing by age 72 regardless, except for the Roth IRA. 
So look at the different situations that these that these provide for you and make a decision on on the one that works best for you. Anything that goes after this can go into a normal taxable brokerage account. So if you're just killing it, you're making tons of money, you've maxed out every single account you can, right? Then just go over to a taxable brokerage account and start investing. So with those accounts covered, we need to go into where you're going to put this money, what actual brokerages you're going to use, and what you're going to invest in. So there's a lot of different brokerages out there that you can open essentially any type of account these days. Um, so there's a couple that I'm going to recommend. The ones that the one that I specifically use is Fidelity. So they're they're great. They have really low fees, and they're really investor friendly. They're retail investor friendly for sure. They have great customer service. There's also Vanguard. They're re highly regarded for their low cost index funds and ETFs. So they're a good option. Charles Schwab. Betterment is a robo advisor. So if, if you don't want to manage your own investments and you just want to have a ro robo advisor do all the investment for you, especially in like something like an IRA, Betterment is a good option. And then TD Ameritrade is also another well-established uh, investment brokerage that you can go with. Now, whatever brokerage you go with, it's important to figure out your investing strategy, right? So do you want to be super risky? Do you just want to set it and forget it? What do you want to do? Now, I'm not in the business of giving out exact financial advice, but I am of the opinion that for most people, for 90 plus percent of the people, you don't know the inner, the day-to-day -day inner workings of the market, right? And your best bet is to go with some kind of index fund, whether it's an S&P 500 index fund, whether it's a total US market or a total world market index fund, you can't go wrong investing in those. Over the course of the history of the stock market, they've always gone up on average and done around eight to nine percent and sometimes even more than that. So if you're not sure what to do, just pick an index fund that you see has good returns over the last five to 10 years and start investing all your money in that. And in the future, once you get more privy to certain types of investment strategies or certain types of stocks or you're following the market, maybe you can switch that strategy up. But my recommendation is to start out with index funds and that's going to provide you the safest and most accountable form of growth you can you can use over the years. Now something that's offered a lot in 401ks is target date funds. I recommend not necessarily using target date funds because a lot of times their returns are equal to or lesser value than just an index fund. And the problem with those is they're optimized for a certain retirement date, right? So if your retirement date changes over the years, and I know a lot of people's retirement date does change over the years, then you're not going to be, and you're heavily invested in something, you're not going to be optimized for the retirement date you pick. So my recommendation is if you want to be as flexible as possible, go with an index fund because you can really never go wrong. So you want to diversify and the easiest way to do that is through an index fund. They're 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 by nature diversified. And that really concludes kind of what to invest, how to invest. The last thing I'd probably leave you guys with is make sure you're maximizing your investments, right? So the more you can save on the front end is the more you're going to have on the back end. Compound interest is a real thing. Uh, the earlier you can save and the more you can save earlier is going to benefit you in the long run in terms of how much money you have on the back end in retirement. That's, that's really it, guys. Final tip is just to invest as much as you can as early as you can. And hopefully this gave you a little bit of clarity on what it looks like to invest as a freelancer, contractor, gig worker. If you guys want more information on any of this stuff, just let me know. I can go into detail more about brokerages, high yield savings accounts, ways to strategize, what, what my personal pick for, for index funds are and the way that I see the market. But yeah, other than that, if you guys want more personal finance tips, ways to get out of debt, how to manage debt, anything like that, let me know down in the comments. And if you like this content, please give me a like subscribe. I'm trying to build a community of people who are financially sound and trying to avoid debt. So yeah, with all that being said, guys, I appreciate the time and we'll see you in the next one.